Hello everybody and welcome back to Atelier Merrillville. Last video we spent most of the day in Arles. We got a kingdom rank up and a few more development quests. Off screen I did a whole lot of synthesizing. I have pretty much achieved all of the things that I need for the handle forest bequest, except for the rich soil. I need to go out and gather a few more materials and I've kind of got my hom doing it for me. I need some more fertilizer and right now I'm in the process of getting my other hom to create more tonics for me so that I don't run out because I need three tonics to make the rich soil but I also need ten tonics to deliver. So I am going to be delivering those sometime in the near future. I have made the pure incense that we need to bring to Heart Outpost. So we are able to go to Heart Outpost and assuming that I can get rid of the bugs, we can pretty much finish that entire area up in one go. As far as Arl's Mine goes, I've made the pickaxes. I made three with a grade of B. I still need to make the Chim doll. I'm looking for the specific li uh, lively trait. I need to go out and gather some materials in order to be able to do that. But I have also made the preview crystals, where we're, which were kind of a pain in the ass to make, but I did it anyways. And now I don't have to worry about it. So I've got quite a few things to deliver. Some monsters to fight, and uh, we now have Sturk in our party, so we should go out and we should try him out and see how he does. Okay, so I wonder where we should go first. It's probably a good idea to loop around, maybe go to the National Mine or Handle Farm and then loop around and go to Heart Outpost. However, I feel like that would take up a lot of time, like a lot of traveling days, and I don't necessarily have all of the ingredients to 100% complete these areas. So I think it's a better idea just to head to Heart Outpost since we can pretty much mop up that entire area in one go. And then we can continue onwards and make our way to the Modus Runes and perhaps take on the Wyvern. I do need to make a quick uh, pit stop here at the Dry Wasteland because I do have a request to hunt the Bomber Squirrel and bring it back to the tavern. So I should probably do that because it's on the way. And it's also not a bad idea while I'm here to pick up some eggs because I always find that I need them for a lot of cooking recipes and whatnot. And I sent my hom here a little while ago, but he seemed to pick up a lot of rock salt and nothing else. It was just a lot of rock salt, a few eggs here and there, and the other ingredient you can find, the, uh, the shell fossils. So I was really disappointed that I didn't get exactly what I wanted, but that's okay. So of course we're familiar with uh, Gino, we've already seen him in battle. But it's good to have him back in the party. Sturk is incredibly powerful, he's got very very high attack, and his defense is also fairly high as well. He's got a variety of really good skills. Some of which are um, stat boosting, can give 25% of defense to another ally, non-elemental and lightning damage to a line of enemies, non-elemental and lightning damage to a target, or lightning damage to all enemies, so he uses a lot of lightning abilities, which is going to be fantastic when it comes to fighting the wyvern, and that's the main reason I wanted to have him in the party. He's one of the highest attacking characters in the game, I do believe. You can see he does over 200 damage per turn, and it's also great that he's a couple levels ahead of us. And it's not that Esty and Rufus were a bad choice, it's just that Rufus lacks the defense, and Esty is kind of lacking the attack power as opposed to Sturk. I've also stocked up my bag with items that I'll need to fight the Wyvern. Let's make a pit stop here in Heart Outpost. Uh, the area is now completely overrun by bugs, you can see here. So we need to exterminate them from the area. Let's first go ahead and deliver our incense. They needed the trait of handcrafted, which I have done. I've, I only needed to create two of them. 15 points for me. 
So let's start uh, exterminating some bugs. These guys are a huge pain in the butt. I don't know what it is about bugs in this game, but they always seem to make the bugs really powerful. Unnecessarily powerful for being, you know, bugs. Now luckily I'm at a pretty high level right now, so these aren't uh, too difficult to do, especially because this one's on its own. But sometimes they do appear in large groups. And it seems to me that they have pretty good attack and defense, which is just, okay, you know, go. perfect. That's the last thing that I need. However, with three against one, I think our chances are pretty good. I'm just going to have to remember to keep healed. However, when we do go to the Modus Ruins, we'll also be able to talk to the Chim and we'll be able to buy some stuff from Pamela's store, and I do have some elixirs that I can buy. So if I need to use a couple of elixirs, I won't be too afraid to use them. Because I have come here when I've been at a lower level. I'm actually a pretty high level compared to how I am in most playthroughs of this game. I usually focus on alchemy a lot more than I do in battle on some of the other playthroughs that I've done. So being at a little bit of a higher level now, is definitely proving to be a bit of an advantage because these enemies are really not that tough for me. Let's get this over with. Not as tough as I thought they'd be anyways. Okay. Use a few magic swords since I've got so many of them. Take care of them faster. I'll go next. And then we need to defeat five or more. So I think this is our third one. So luckily they don't make you defeat 10 or 15 because that would be torture. Five is a pretty good number. And then once you defeat the bugs and you report in and get your development points, you'll get the regular monsters back on the map. And I do believe that Heart Outpost also levels up, quote unquote, develops more, I guess you could say. And the stuff that you can grab from here becomes a little bit better, becomes a better uh, quality and whatnot, so that's good. I just need to find one more bug, I think. I think it went off this way. There it is. <laughs> I've seen stronger. <laughs> and then we'll be done here. I've also stocked my bag with some food items. I don't tend to heal with food very often. I do prefer to use potions. But it's good to use food because there is one of the development tasks for Meruru that you get from the teacher. And it's to heal using clicking a certain amount of times. And I never get it because I never use food. And it's not that food is bad necessarily. I definitely don't want to discourage anybody from using food because it can be a good resource. But I never use it personally. So I'm trying to force myself to use some more food. And apparently I was wrong. We do need to defeat one more or two more bugs. If I could find them. I might be here a little bit longer than I expected. Princess, here's our chance. But so far I'm doing okay. Just gotta keep up with my healing. Let's use this. And it's basically the same thing. Rinse and repeat. As for a strategy with these bugs, I don't think I really have a strategy, to be honest. It's basically, kill them before they can kill you, and that's about as simple as I can make it. Because these guys have such high defense, as well as high attack power, you really want to make sure that they're not uh, attacking you continuously and that this battle doesn't go on forever. I really need to heal Gino up. He's getting a little behind there. That, that looked to be the last bug, and now you can see that the enemies are back and the place has been transformed. We've got some of the ingredients have scaled up in level, like I've mentioned. We've now got uh, A quality items, which is great. Ooh, A quality fest is nice to have. And I think that's about it for this area. We don't have to report into the night. That one just happens automatically. And I guess... 
should heal up a little bit here before I go. And we're gonna hit the road again, and we are going to head out towards the Modus Ruins. And Forest is gonna move. I haven't been there in a while either. They've got some good collectibles to get, some good gather points. One of these days, I'm sure, I'll get around to going there. But for now, we're coming back to the Modus Ruins here. Let's stop in and visit our little Chim. And let's grab a few things because it never hurts to be prepared. Grabbing some magic swords just in case. Let's stock right up on elixirs. And I can't think of anything else I want to buy. Maybe I'll buy a pinwheel. Now, as you can see, I'm completely broke. I also spent a bunch of money earlier on a few things off screen in order to aid me with my alchemy, so I really need some money. I'm extremely broke, but that's okay. I'm sure I'll get money back. You know, money's not a hard thing to get in this game or anything like that. I think because I've already shown off this area the first time that we were here, I'm going to just run away for video's sake because it could probably make the video too long if I uh, sit here in battle. I don't think I'll have time to fight the Wyvern in this video, but I'll definitely get to where he is, and then we can take that on as our challenge for next video. So this is the screen we left off on with the uh, lizards, and I'm going to try and skip right past them because they are vicious. I did do a lot of grinding, and I do believe I got Rufus uh, up three levels from when he entered the ruins by grinding using those lizards, which was pretty cool. So now that we're past that, we're going to be moving on to the fourth screen of the ruins. A little bit of a winding path. And there's going to be a lot of climbing in this area, but it's a really neat looking area. I really like it. It does portray that feeling of it being ruins, which I think is really cool. So in here, you've got ghost enemies. These ones, I do believe we've already seen. They appear at uh, the cape after you build the bridge, which we have done. So I'm not gonna bother fighting them either because they're definitely not as tough as the lizard enemies. And I would recommend fighting them if you want to gain the upper hand and get a few levels in this place. So they're pretty easy to avoid. And then after that, we can enter the central ruins. And this area is where the wyvern is sleeping. So let's climb up. There's a few gather points along the way that we can grab. But make sure not to step into the center. We're gonna climb up this giant tree. I really like this too. It's really neat how this whole ruin type area is almost built around this big tree. But as you're climbing up, make sure that you don't get too close to the center of the ruins uh, up here because that will pretty much automatically trigger the boss battle with the wyvern. So we're going to save that for next time. I'm going to see how I do with my new party. Hopefully we can take down this very, very tough adversary and ease the people of Arles. Thank you so very much for watching, everybody, and I hope that I will see you next time.